Hello. Um, sorry, I'm a couple of minutes late. I had some technical difficulties. I had to put in a title and I put it in the wrong spot so it wouldn't let me start my video. Um, I know it takes uh, people a little bit of time to get on the app and find the live. So we'll just kind of take a couple of seconds to let some people hop on. And I will let you know um, that I'm super excited about all the questions that came up. And I sat down last night and wrote and wrote and wrote and tried to get organized so I didn't feel like I was going on 10 bazillion different rabbit trails. Um, so let me get back to the beginning of my notes um, so that we can start talking about high school. Um, so my name is Ann. I'm a mentor on the Sunlight app and I have been homeschooling with Sunlight since 2007. I currently have a freshman in college, and so he has graduated from my home school, and my daughter is a junior in high school. Uh, and I am actually a former high school biology teacher, so I've got some high school experience on, um, you know, the public school side, plus getting my kids through the homeschool too. And I think just like anybody else, as you are homeschooling and you approach high school, it does make you a little bit nervous. I remember, um, you know, thinking, you know, I love what we're doing. I love using sunlight, but I mean, high school's coming. Do I need to, to do something different, do something that gives me a transcript or, or, you know, something accredited or anything like that? And, and I got scared. Uh, I do. I live in a state where we don't have to keep any records at all in elementary school, but you know, I knew it was coming when we got to high school that I would have to do that. So what did I do? Um, I talked to other moms, other moms that had been there and done that. And I was assured that uh, I could do this. And, and, uh, and I did, I have, and I'm still you know, in the thick of it with my junior in high school, so I'm happy to share my experiences with you all. And as you do come on, uh, definitely pop questions in uh, as soon as you think of them so we can address whatever you guys want to talk about. So in my notes, I have written down uh, things about different topics concerning high school that touch on what the questions were that people had in the app uh, this week. So uh, I do want to start by saying when you are getting close to high school, you should check and see if you have any requirements that your state needs you to fulfill in order to graduate from your home school. And like I said before, I live in a state where um, we really you know, don't have anything specific. We are considered uh, private schoolers, you know, um, and so we can um, do what we want to do. But still, you, know, you kind of need to have an idea of what should I do. So even if you don't have any state requirements, I do encourage you to look at what the public schools in your state do require. And if your child is college bound, you should definitely look and see what the colleges want you to have. And it will vary a little bit. The most competitive school that my son applied for required or wanted you to have four English credits, four math, three of which had to be algebra one, geometry and algebra two. And I'll pause here for a quick second because Ashley on the app um, did bring up a concern about math. Um, about being behind in math. Uh, the thing about math is that there's no way to rush math. There's just no way to do it. You, you have to go with their pace for them to learn what they need to learn with math. So if you do feel like you are getting a little bit behind in math, um, and you're afraid you won't be where you need to be in high school, I would say to slow and steady wins the race. You can, um, you know, keep on doing math during the summers, and um, and even if they're a little bit behind at the moment, um, well, math is repetitive, and you'll see things again and again. And sometimes things click when they just didn't click before. Maybe they just needed to be a little older, or um, you know, who knows what the experience might be where something clicks um, with math. So, but. Um, for, to be a college-bound student, you want to see Algebra 1, Geometry, and Algebra 2 on the high school transcript. And if the college wants to see a fourth math, then that is your choice. 
So back to, this was the most competitive school that my son happened to apply for, what they wanted to see on their high school transcript. Okay, there was four English, four math, four science, two had to be a lab, science, but you could choose two from biology, chemistry, or physics. They wanted three social studies, two foreign language, and one fine arts. And then, of course, you would fill in uh, electives for other credits. Um, other variations that I have seen just doing my own looking into schools for my kids when they were ready to apply. Um, for English, again, that, that's totally standard. And the really cool thing about English on your transcript is that you just can call it English 1, English 2, English 3, and English 4. Super simple. Uh, some of the schools we looked at just required three math and three science instead of four. Um, three social studies, two foreign language, that was pretty typical. And then the one fine arts. Uh, and then of course the other credits and electives can vary. Uh, I'm in Texas and to graduate from public school in Texas you have to have between 22 and 26 credits. So when do you earn these credits? Uh, we had a question come up um, about this. Uh, Sarah R. on the app has a 12-year-old going into 8th grade, but is really going to be doing 9th grade materials. And uh, she listed some different options, and they really are all uh, definitely options you could do. Um, but um, my personal opinion, you know, if you're in 8th grade but doing everything 9th grade, just basically say you skip the 8th grade and then just start that year as your first year of high school and do four years of high school. Um, I did not get a chance to tag uh, Christy, but Christy is another mentor, and she is in Tennessee, and I know that they have some sort of, um, uh, you know, umbrella school type of thing or something, and um, there's some sort of five-year high school option with that. So I'm going to call out on Christy if she sees this, uh, or I can tag her on the post afterwards. She might be able to pipe in and talk about that, but... Uh, traditionally, high school is just four years. So in the case of Sarah's daughter, um, I would plan on doing four years of high school stuff. And since she will be super young getting um, uh, out of high school, I definitely think doing your first year at um, a local community college or junior college would be a great idea. Or take a year off and work and then join a um, a university. So a lot of people are hopping on. Uh, I'm glad to see that you all are here. I want to make sure you know that you can post your questions uh, in the app as we go. I am touching on a lot of the concerns that were posted on the app. Um, so right now, uh, we're, we're just wrapping up talking about high school credits. Um, now, high school credits can be earned before the ninth grade if it is a high school level course. I think the most common one is Algebra 1. Uh, a lot of kids will take that as an 8th grader and that can go on your high school transcript. Um, but that, that really is the main one. Um, if you've got a history class, you know, the, the literature-basedness of sunlight can make things a little bit confusing sometimes because, you know, some people use level H for ninth grade. But let's say you're in 8th grade and you're doing level H. Well, you would not put that on your high school transcript. Whatever you're doing for your history, you will just put whatever they do in 9th and 10th and 11th and so on. So that, uh, here's another question from the app, um, specifically about science, high school science options. And this is from L Tabit 38 from the app. Oh, good. And I see that she uh, has joined. Um, so high school science options. Sunlight uh, offers the Apologia and uh, the Berean Builders are the two publishers that Sunlight carries. And the Apologia titles all start with Exploring Creation With, and the Berean Builders all start with Discovering Design With. And these high school courses are designed to be done independently by the student. The textbooks are written to the student. Uh, there are questions. They, they, uh, all of these books have the same format where you've got uh, reading scheduled and at the end of the reading will be just a, two or three questions and the answers to those are in the back of the chapter. So as your student is going through, it's totally okay um, to not know the answers or know how to figure them out because you'll just flip to the back and read the explanation and learn it as you go. 
So they really are designed to be done independently. Uh, I personally do have a preference for the chemistry. Um, I have used, uh, for both of my kids, the Berean Builders Discover and Design with Chemistry. And I have done the labs with that in our homeschool co-op. And it's really cool because they all work. And it's really great when the high school, uh, you know, your science labs actually work. Um, and um, so I, I know that the comment that uh, she heard from other people was that they are really tough classes. And that's true. <laughs> they are. They're really tough. You can definitely consider them to be, you know, prepping you for college uh, for sure. Uh, they come with a textbook, a solutions book, and either a sunlight schedule or the apology a student notebook. So you will get a schedule for your student to follow. They are all very vocabulary heavy. Any kind of science is. There's just a ton of terminology you get to learn when you do anything science. So I want to emphasize, and this is so important, that you are in charge of the assessments for your class. Okay, I think I mentioned at the very beginning that I was a high school biology teacher before I started homeschooling. And of course, we had a textbook that we used. And the textbook came with tests. I never used them. Never, ever. I made my own test based on, you know, what I chose to emphasize or go over. So I'm not saying that you've got to, you know, create your own tests for your stuff. But you can absolutely modify anything that is given to you in any kind of high school science class. Um, I mentioned the vocabulary heavy part. Well, back when I taught biology, of course, we had a ton of vocabulary words. I never had my students just sit there and define the words. I just, I just didn't. Uh, um, to me, that's a little more busy-ish work. Not that you can't get anything out of it. You can get something out of it. But to me, um, you learn the vocabulary as you learn about what the words mean and read about them in context in the chapter. Um, and so all of those tests in these high school textbooks, the first question on these tests is define these words and it gives you a list. And so sometimes I would turn that into matching. Um, I never did have them write just rote memorization definitions. Um, another idea is to use that vocabulary to change the question up and say, um, use this word in a sentence so that you know you understand what it means even without just spitting out some sort of dictionary type of definition. Um, and then same thing for uh, the test questions. I think that open book tests are a great idea when it comes to some of the high school subjects because um, it actually, well, is a skill to be able to, to look things up and to be able to understand what you're reading to answer the question that is being asked. So if you um, feel like the, the um, tests are um, not suited to your child, you are absolutely free to um, modify those in any way. And let's see here. So um, any other questions about the high school science? Uh, if you have some, please pop them in there. I guess I kind of rambled on and on, um, but, but the point is, you know, it, it's your class. You're using some materials, but it is your science class and you can absolutely um, make it what you need to be. Uh, you have a busy week, um, make an open book test. Um, you want them to learn better study skills, then um, uh, you know, have, have them work on that and take the test closed book. You are in charge of that, like Jonna said. Mamas are in charge. Um, okay, moving on to another topic, uh, electives. When I mentioned those different courses that everybody pretty much takes, your four English and your three science and your three history, well, you can do those, but that, that still won't give you enough credits to technically graduate. Like I said, in Texas, you have to have between 22 and 26 credits. So electives are how you get the rest. And I will admit, I was really super nervous about electives. Um, but it turned out it was not nearly as hard as I thought it would be. Uh, if you think about it, Bible, you do an HBL, your Bible is already included. Um, I, so you put that separate on your transcript and then you've got an elective. Uh, Sunlight does offer some electives. I brought a few here. These might be backwards. I don't know. Um, 
on the screen. Maybe it'll, maybe they're not backwards. Uh, but Logic, you can get these two books and get, uh, depending on how in depth you go with them, you could do a half credit for a Logic class or a whole credit. And let's see, um, Money Matters. Here is another one, Money Matters for teens. You can get a personal finance type of credit for an elective. So Sunlight does have several things. And something um, that I didn't even really realize, but uh, I have heard from other homeschool moms and I have done it myself, and it is so valuable. You look at what your kids are already doing. And um, uh, so let's say your child is in piano lessons. Well, you get to put that on the transcript. I know that if they were in public school, that wouldn't end up on their transcript because it's only the things that they do in the public school get on there. But in homeschool, you can put other things on there. Uh, you can put your music lessons, uh, you can put dance, you can put um, athletics if they are on some sort of sports team. Um, one of the things that my daughter has done in our co-op is um, a cake decorating class, a baking class. Uh, this semester in the co-op, she's doing a candy making class, all sorts of things. And so I'm calling that culinary art. Uh, do they, do your child, do that, do they have any kind of hobbies like, um, shop or auto mechanics? Um, we personally have not done any of that kind of thing, but if you've got a hands-on type of kid and he and his dad, you know, work on the car and stuff like that, um, and it actually adds up to a decent amount of time, you can add that kind of thing as an elective. Uh, does your high schooler have a job? You can call that occupational education and have that as a credit each year. So all of these things can be on your transcript every single year. Um, but going back to that culinary art thing. So I said my daughter took a little class here, a little class there, did some stuff at home here and there. So it all totals up to be, let's say, a half credit of culinary arts. And you just decide where you're gonna put that on the transcript. Uh, I'm gonna put that, you know, um, first semester, sophomore year. Um, it really, it, it does not matter that it wasn't all done in that semester. Uh, that's totally okay. You just, uh, it's a way to list um, everything that they've done. Um, another way to put things on the transcript is by subject. So you could have history and just list all their history they've had. Then you can have math and list all of that. And if that um, seems like a more logical way for you to do it, then that is fine too. So let me get back to my notes, make sure I'm not skipping anything. Um, oh yeah, I've been mentioning all these credits, half credit, whole credit. Uh, a class that takes one semester's worth of time is a half credit. And a class that is two semesters time would be one credit. But like I said, it doesn't have to be done in a specific time frame from September to December. You know, that does not matter. Uh, Jonna has a comment. Um, oh, large event planning. That's a neat thing. And uh, so they got a half credit for that. That is a great idea. Um, one of the things my son did, he <coughs> kind of um, got obsessed with a topic, uh, World War II. He read every book he could get his hands on. He watched all these documentaries. We ended up um, going to Hawaii one year. So we went to Pearl Harbor. And that's a pretty cool field trip, you know, for your uh, history class. And he gave me the list of all the things that he had read and all the things that he had watched. And uh, we discussed those things. And so I was able to give him a credit. Uh, I called it World War II Studies. So using electives based on what your kids are just doing in their spare time is a really good way to show on your transcript, you know, their unique um, things that they're doing that they're interested in. It can really um, help your students stand out from others. Now, when you're done with your transcript, um, to be accepted by a college, all the ones that we applied to when my son applied a year ago wanted us to have it notarized. So I printed off a whole bunch of copies of my transcript, or not my transcript, his transcript, uh, went to my bank where they have a notary and we just did that all at once. And then as I needed to mail them out to schools, I had them ready to go. So how nitty gritty things, I mean, how do you even type up your transcript? 
Um, you can make something in Excel. You can make something in Word. There are programs like Homeschool Tracker that you can have a subscription to, and you put the grades in there, and it'll print out um, different formats of transcripts. I know there's another one called Homeschool Planet I've heard of. I have not looked into if they have make a transcript, but they probably do too. And the purpose of the transcript is to list the courses and the grades by year or by subject. And you can also list your test scores, um, like your ACT and your SAT on there. And every student, college bound or not, really should have a transcript of uh, what they've done in high school. And it, it's not hard to do if you just do it as you go. Now, speaking of test scores, that is another topic that came up in the app, uh, ACT and SAT. Well, lots and lots and lots of colleges are moving away from requiring those for admission. But scholarships and financial aid and things still are often dependent on them. So it really is important that your high schooler do uh, one or both of those tests. Um, Oh yeah, uh, what we have found looking at some different schools, sometimes out-of-state tuition waivers may be based on GPA or they may be based on test scores. And that can have a big um, impact on which school you end up choosing. Uh, there is one school that we looked at where um, they would give homeschoolers a class ranking, like a percentage, um, and it would be based on their test scores. Um, so like they would rank your student in the top 25% or the top 50% of their you know, homeschool class based on their test scores. So question from the app. This came from two people from Ashley and from, uh, sorry, I don't have a name. I just got the little letters, you know, L Talbot 38 about test prep and taking the ACT and SAT. So when do you take it? Spring of your junior year. Uh, you've got to take it then. My daughter signed up for April 15th for the ACT. You, of course, you can take it earlier. Uh, you can take it as a sophomore just to get um, a little feel for it. To, so then the, the pressure of it all, you know, you're kind of used to that. You've been there, done that. So then when you take it as a junior, uh, you might feel a little bit more at ease. Of course, if you take it too early before you've actually learned a lot of the math, um, I mean, that's kind of what I, I didn't have my kids take it too early because I kind of thought, well, they haven't even learned that math yet, so what's the point? Um, so I did wait until their junior year. So spring of junior year for sure. And then they can take it again in the summer and the fall of their senior year. Because I think everybody, every student takes it more than once. Because uh, you typically do raise your score if you um, take it again. So where do you take the ACT or the SAT? To find out where the ACT test is in your area, go to act.org. To find out where the SAT is in your area, you would go to collegeboard.org. And they will list the test dates and the test locations. So how do you pick which test to do? Um, well, I don't want to take the time. This actually might be a whole other live app topic. Okay, it could be. Let me know if you want that about the differences between the two tests and kind of how to pick um, which one you want to do. But it turns out that my daughter could take the ACT. It's about 10 minutes away from our house. To take the SAT, we have to drive 45 minutes. So there you go. Decision was made. Um, so prep, how do you get ready for these tests? Um, of course, just doing your school, learning your math, and doing your um, your language arts and your English uh, is, is prep all by itself. But you need to, your student needs to be aware of what kinds of questions they ask and, and kind of how they're run. So you definitely want to uh, practice with some actual released tests. Uh, I have always gone to a used bookstore to pick up um, some books. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're a couple of years old. Um, the tests have not changed that much recently. Uh, the SAT is going to do away with their um, essay, though. They're about to do that. Uh, but the timing uh, really can be an issue with some students, and so you really want to do some practice ahead of time, uh, timing the different uh, passages. And 
Ah, okay. Uh, I've already mentioned that most take the test at least twice. Okay, this is something I did not mention yet. I'm glad I put it in my notes. Some colleges will super score your test. So let's say you take it your junior year uh, spring. And let's say you're doing the ACT. And you do really well on your English and your reading. Um, but not so well in the math because you're still working through your math class. And you haven't quite learned all that stuff yet. Well, let's say you take it in the summer and you up that math score. Well, uh, a lot of schools will take the highest score from each of the four sections and they will count that as your score on the test. It's called super scoring. Now, some schools do it and some schools don't. So you will have to look into that and see. Um, the next question from the app had to do with communicating with colleges about you know when when do you do that uh I, anytime anytime during high school is fine um like i said if you're wanting to plan what your child needs on their transcript you should be looking uh their freshman year to make sure that you are giving yourself time to have all the classes on there that you should college visits are really important you will get a feel for um the school and the campus and all that. And you can do that anytime during high school. But you, you don't want to just drive up and show up and walk around. Um, you want to officially sign up for a campus visit. Uh, so it will be in their records that they have visited. And then you get to visit with the admissions people and the people in the department that they might be interested in. I just uh, did a visit recently with my daughter and she we signed her up to go to two different departments and uh, she really learned a lot from from that visit uh, that she was really not interested in the the coursework and the type of thing with the one department and she really was in the other uh, so it can really help you see uh, what you might want to go into and that leads us to the next question Sunny asked how to identify what your students want to do uh, that's such a tough question. And of course, every child is different. Mine are two polar opposites. Um, my son has always loved history. If anybody has read 20 and 10 back from level A, um, I'm serious, that just got him hooked and he has loved history ever since. Um, and he's always known he wanted to do something with the study of history or something like that. So we used the flexibility of homeschooling to try to hone in on you know what he might want to do so he loves history we homeschool we have a flexible schedule we took three whole weeks off of all of our regular school stuff back in 2020 and he worked three weeks as an election clerk for early voting and then worked you know a whopping 14 hour long shift on election day and um yeah we couldn't do that if we didn't homeschool um and so now he's a political science major um he, he looked at the course lists um, for those different degrees between history and political science and just looked at all those classes he would get to take with political science. He was like, I want to do this. This is what I want to learn about. Um, so other ways to use your flexibility of homeschooling to try to determine their interest is to get a job or an internship in a particular field. Um, I actually did that in high school, in public school. It was called the Management Internship Program, and I got set up with a veterinarian to work for them one day, one afternoon a week after school, and it was a great experience, but I did learn that I did not want to end up being a veterinarian, so I went the um, high school biology teacher route instead. So getting in the community and shadowing people, um, uh, uh, talking to others is just a great way to see what you might be interested in. Um, my son uh, went all the way through the scouting program, and if something like that is available in your area, when they're earning different merit badges, they are actually learning about all different fields of work, and that can help see help them see uh, what they're interested in. Um, so. My daughter was a whole different story. Um, she's really good at her school, and she does really well in all of her subjects. But, you know, she she did what my son did, you know, looked at these degree plans, and, and they're like history, biology, chemistry. And she's like, ah, I don't want to just work in one subject. And, you know, that just, I don't know, that just doesn't seem like a good fit. 
Um, and she um, was not in Scouts. Um, so in high school, I wanted her to have something on her, um, you know, some other activity besides just school. So she said, hey, I'm going to get a job. And so since she's been 15, she has worked at Chick-fil-A, and it has been a really great thing. And it led her to start thinking about, yeah, you know, more of a business degree or something like that, where you kind of have a lot of different, um, I can't think of the word, uh, different things, you know, that are combined. It's not like you're just doing, you know, chemistry, you're just doing math, you know, you get to apply, apply that's the word, apply a lot of different things um, in your job. Uh, and so she started looking into that and talking about this event planning, like John had mentioned, uh, that's something that she is really looking into. And that's actually that department that she said, oh, I really like this stuff, was the hospitality management field. So she is looking into that. Uh, Sunlight does have a couple of resources. Let's see, I've got this one. And we actually started to do this, but then she ended up finding um, that hospitality management degree. So we're gonna go visit a couple schools and, and see all of that stuff. But Sunlight has this, um, Finding the Career That Fits You book, which is part, uh, you can buy it separately. It is part of an elective called College and Career Planning. Uh, there's also this college admissions book that's really handy uh, that Sunlight sells. Um, and yeah, so any of you out there that have had kids that have figured out what they want to do, uh, share, share how they figured that out. Um, and, um, and we can just all get some ideas. Let's see. Oh, okay. Another way to try to figure out what you might be interested in. Uh, classes. Picking your classes wisely. So my daughter is pretty good at science. And so she's like, hmm, let me um, let me take marine biology um, this year. And I'll, I'll see what I think about that. So she's taking marine biology. And she likes it. She likes learning about all the ocean things. But she decided, nah, I don't want to make a career out of it. So use what you're doing in high school to help them figure that out also. So, the last topic based on what you all had in the app uh, for me, a day in the life of a high schooler. So, if you have been a high school, uh, a sunlighter for any amount of time, I think the hardest part, well, three, three hardest things about starting up high school is that there's no more read-alouds and you have a textbook for science. We were used to all these amazing books. And yeah, high school comes and you get one, <laughs> you get one book. You're like, really? Do you have to just one, just one? Yes, and it's okay. Uh, and then there's no more four day options. So when you get to high school, you have to do the five day schedule, but you can still make it work for you. So um, in high school with sunlight, you have two instructor guides, two IGs, one for the student and one for you. They both have the schedule and all the questions, but yours only has the answers. It is designed to be done independently. So Katie in the app was asking about fitting it all in and how much parent involvement there is in high school. And of course it varies by student, but it is designed to be as independent as you want it to be. And uh, some people check in once a day with their high schooler to look over what they've done, maybe do some of the discussion questions together. Uh, I'm having my daughter do her questions in a notebook, and I'll look over it once a week. And then we'll get together if there's some concept I know that she just didn't get, you know, we'll go back to that page and, and talk about it. And we have a once a week meetup. So it can be really independent. Um, uh, depending on your student, uh, I did this with my son. Uh, we started with half days. It was a big jump for him uh, to be, you know, fo following his own schedule and that kind of thing and doing all the reading himself. So we started with half days and we did that for a couple of weeks. Um, so you can take the time those first couple of weeks or however long it needs to be to guide your student through what he needs to be doing. And then once a routine is set, it will flow really well. Uh, Katie also mentioned fitting it all in because of uh, sports or other activities. And it definitely can be done. Um, to, um, some, if the sports and things are all after school hours, um, just set your wake up time. Your, 
students wake up time where it needs to be so that they can get everything done. Uh, what's worked best for us with our sports that are after school and this Chick-fil-A job is to do school in the morning. She works the lunch rush and then she has the rest of the afternoon to finish school or if she has a volleyball game that's out of town, we just hit the road. Um, so use that flexibility to your advantage. And let's see. Um, and, and you really can fit it all in. Um, and the, the great thing about the flexibility of it, um, like during our couple of months where we have lots and lots of volleyball games, um, we may take a slower pace at math or, um, or, or just whatever, however you need to tweak it. But then when that one season is over, then you can get back into, um, uh, doing more more of the things that you had to kind of set aside for a while because you, you know you think about it, you've got the whole year to get everything done uh but in my experience watching your kids develop that independence is really a joy it has been fun seeing them take control of their schedule seeing what they need to do every day uh, and then plan accordingly it just last night um my daughter was uh before she went to bed she was working on the stuff for her next day for today because she has a volleyball thing this afternoon and she's like ah, I don't really want to have to do school after I get back from work um and so she just did what she had to do and it definitely prepares you for the future for a job or for college whatever the case may be that independence um uh gets instilled in them and a work ethic too so the other question that came up was, you know, does what sunlight offer prepare them for their future? Uh, in my case, yes, I have, you know, of course, my son has not graduated college yet, but he's a freshman. Uh, he is doing really uh, well in his classes. Um, I have found that the independence and the work ethic that is developed by using sunlight in high school has prepared him to be on his own. Uh, I did choose to have him take two classes, one per semester, at our local junior college his senior year. And that was not because I thought Sunlight was missing anything um, academically, but it was to give him, yes, I'm reading my notes, y'all forgive me, uh, an intro into the college systems. Okay, because things are so different from when I was in college. I actually would write a paper and turn it in at the front of the room. Okay, they don't do that anymore. Everything is on these online systems. There's one called Blackboard, there's one called Canvas. Um, and so I wanted him to have a little experience with those uh, systems before being, you know, just thrown into, um, you know, everything new, being, you know, away from home, being new, doing, being on the college campus, being new. Um, I didn't want that to be something new. I wanted him to be comfortable in the systems that they use to turn in their work and things like that. Uh, and going into college with those six credit hours, three in the fall, three in the spring, he got his senior year, that enabled him to take 12 hours per semester his freshman year, which um, was you know, a, a nice um, load, yeah, very doable. Uh, and it definitely uh, set him up for success uh, his first year here. And talking about sunlight preparing your kids, you all know how you really go in depth when you're reading all the history and reading the literature and you're talking about, um, you know, why this character is doing this and what is the reasoning behind this. Uh, and you really get a balanced education. So I've got to share this story uh, that just happened this week. My son is in a communication class at his college. And so basically speech, they call it communication. Um, he, every student chooses and gets approved by the professor a term topic that will carry them through their speeches all the way along. So the first speech is informational. The second speech is analysis of controversy. And the third one is persuasive. So they have to pick a topic that has some sort of, um, you know, debatable thing, one side or the other. And the speech that they're all giving right now is the analysis of controversy. And he called me up to tell me, you know, mom, I just can't believe, you know, that people are not understanding this. They're not under the other students, some, not all, but some of the other students in the class don't understand how they can tell both sides 
of one, of an issue in a speech and be neutral about it and not you know take a side or not um show any sort of bias um but so uh, anyway all this to say that the critical thinking skills that you get from doing literature based curriculum um uh, are, are, are just so good and and he is just loving this communication class um, and, um, and and he is seeing how beneficial his education with sunlight was so okay last but not least uh, scholarships uh, sunlight does have a scholarship program and to be eligible for your senior in high school to do this you have to have done five history bible literature programs uh, or of course all subjects packages that includes the HBL uh, and of course you have to have purchased them from sunlight so if you have done five but they are all used bought from somewhere else you are not eligible to participate in this uh, December 1st is the deadline uh, December 1st of your student senior year is the deadline to fill out that application so emails always go out you can find um, all the details on the website but that is an option for people that have done five H or people students that have done five HBLs and purchased them from sunlight so uh, that is the end of my notes thank you for um, hanging in here with me and uh, I hope that you have gained some information and some tips about homeschooling high school with sunlight if you have any questions um, this video will be posted in the app after the fact and uh, ask questions tell us about your experiences so that we can all learn from each other thanks for joining me